you know, I always ask people, do you want to be paid in cash or card? And, I, and you know, I'd ask 10 times, five people would say yeah. cash, five would say card. Yeah, so, you know, I'm easy either way. Yeah, yeah, right. So I'm out here at a job today in Maroubra for a Foxtel customer who's been having a very unique type of issue. Now, this has been going on for six weeks. The genesis of this issue started when he received a new router from Foxtel. Um, and the actual problem is he doesn't, he doesn't have an internet service, it's phone only, so it's a VoIP service. Um, and everything's working fine, right? So the problem is, is one specific number in Australia that he can't call, and it's actually his sister's number. Now, when his sister tries to call him uh, and the phone rings and he picks it up, it just as soon as he picks the phone up, it will go to an engage signal on his sister's end and also on his end. Then when he tries to call his sister's number, and she's only five kilometres away from here, when he tries to call her number, then the uh, exactly the same thing happens, an engage signal will go onto the phone on his end and same on her end. Now, I've called this number, spoke to his sister on the mobile, then we've set up a couple of tests um, and it's the, exactly what he described to me is happening. So the when I tried to call his sister, we let it ring two times and I picked up, boom, straight away engage signal disconnection. Then when she did the same, boom, changed then what i thought well maybe you know, it's very strange i called out a whole you know another other numbers my mobile it's ringing fine we've just been an hour onto the phone to foxtel everything's fine from this actual phone i put in my bedinsky just to double check make sure it's not a problem with the phone but it's definitely not a problem with the phone we saw powered cycled the the router um you know every other number under the sun seems to be working fine it's this one specific number so like I said, I've been on the phone to Foxtel. Now, he's actually called them many times, written a couple of emails to them, and nothing seems to have happened over the last six weeks with this. Now, one of the guys from Foxtel, which he's obviously dealt with me before, had recommended me to come out here and to, to work, check this out. Um, so I've been out here today to try and work out what the hell is going on. Now, it seems to me that this is a programming issue. So it's, it's not a issue with his phone or the internet or anything because it's one specific number. So the lady who I was talking to, uh, she was very helpful. Name is Mikey and she was trying to, she was in the Philippines, but she was trying to get contact with either a level two or somebody in Australia, but the whole time I was on the phone to her, um, nobody was responding and nobody was getting back to her. So what we've done is given 24 hours, um, so by 10 a.m. tomorrow, to get in contact with us before this gets escalated any further. Now, um, basically what we are thinking or what I'm thinking the problem is, it's obviously a block of some sort, right? So. Maybe from the sister's end, uh, there's some sort of blockage on this particular number or on his end, or potentially it's a programming issue and it's something to do with that exchange area um, because, you know, we haven't called every number in Australia. We've called a few, but the ones that have called all seem to work. So it could be something to do with a general location, right? So we don't know. So it could be just a programming issue, right? So what we've asked to do is to have somebody take a look at this that knows what they're doing, break the line down, rebuild it, and then hopefully that will um, fix the problem. Now, if not, um, then you know this needs to get escalated further. So making this video today, just in case this needs to get escalated and needs to go to the ombudsman that I can you know, detail everything that I've gone through here today. Um, so basically that's it, that's where we're at. Um, Foxtel is going to get back to the customer this afternoon, was it? Is that Between right? four and six. Yeah. Between four and six, um, to let him know what the progress is. And then they're gonna contact me within by 10 a.m. tomorrow and then uh, hopefully they've done that. If not, then obviously this will get escalated in our report. Well then, um, you know, he can forward that onto the Ombudsman and take up a case there. So because this is like six weeks and basically, you know, he calls his sister all the time. 
And, uh, and then the other weird thing happened too, which I can't confirm because I, I, I don't, you know, it's, a, it's another thing that's happened, but his brother lives in the UK and he's tried to call him. So do you want to explain what happened with your brother? Yeah. My brother, the phone rang on Christmas Day at 8.30 in the morning. I picked it up and the same problem when I dialed my sister, went straight to the engage signal. And I didn't take any notice at the time because I didn't know it was my brother till my sister got an email a couple of days later. And then, but I am, and then I rang him. I am able to ring my brother in the United Kingdom, but he cannot ring me. So I, I, can't, I can't follow that one either. Yeah, so it's a family issue. Um, so I don't know what's going on because it's weird that that would happen, you know, his brother and his sister. So, you know, what we're going to try and do is uh, I'm going to call his sister now and get her to check, you know, on her end from the ISP and just make sure there's no manual blocks or anything like that on her line uh, just so we can put that in the report and just because I just try to cover all the bases on this one. Um, so that's basically where we're at. Um, anyway, so that's why we're making this video today. Got anything else you want to state? No, no. And, 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 and hopefully, um, after all these complaints and the very good work that Jason has done, I want to make sure that I get the fee because it's a Foxtel problem and it's got nothing to do with me. And I've done everything, everything the proper way. So I just hope that um, I don't have any trouble getting uh, Jason's feedback and I hope this eventually gets fixed up. Yeah, I don't think you'll have a problem. No, no. All right, all right, that's it. So I just spoke to his sister um, to find out what ISP that she was with and they said 100% that she's with Foxtel. They've been paying the bill for Foxtel for years. So when I spoke to Foxtel about this one from Trevor, um, Trevor's, the Foxtel lady who I was speaking to when I gave her the sister's number said that that is not a Foxtel number, all right? So what I've just spoke to the sister, advised her now to call Foxtel um, and to just ask them if, you know, the number is with them firstly, check if there's any manual blocks or anything on her end so we can sort of clear that so yeah this one's uh there's some sort of issue definitely here um but you know so i'm just trying to cover all the bases here so we're getting her to do a little bit of investigation work on her end now she's going to call me back shortly um i might hang around here for a few more minutes and just see if she can get back to us soon and then i can do another update all right if not, uh, it'll all be in the report. All right, so I'm out my morning walk. Uh, yesterday afternoon, um, the customer called me back. Uh, basically said, it's all working now. So what happened is I spoke to his sister <clears throat> um, that day and she said she'd make some inquiries on her end. Then obviously, uh, Mikey, the, the uh, customer service manager, or the case manager at um, Foxtel, she finally got through to somebody. Um, and she knew we were deadly serious and wanted, we wanted to get this fixed up this time, otherwise we were gonna escalate the whole thing. So she managed to get two people to work on it and they found indeed, yes, it wasn't programmed correctly. Um, they didn't put it a couple of codes wrong. And so, like I said, it was a five minute job. Um, they fixed that up and then all of a sudden he could ring his sister, his sister could ring him and he was extremely happy over the moon. So, very good resolution and uh, that's that. All right, so I would have to say it was, uh, pretty good the um customer service rep from foxtel was uh quite nice very wanted to help she wanted to help <clears throat> and um so it was good that they got it resolved uh, after we intervened and um yeah but you know they could have pulled their finger out a bit earlier and uh, done these type of things themselves <clears throat> but sometimes it needs the intervention of you know, somebody that knows what they're talking about and, 
you don't let them wiggle out of it by saying they're going to put you to somebody else to do something. So, yeah, there you go. Getting uh, a Foxtel, a Foxtel service to work. <clears throat> um, yeah, do you have any problems or anything similar? Give us a call. All right, bye. Hey guys, it's uh, Jason here from Securicom. So if you're in need of some internet help, um, whether that is uh, getting a fault fixed up, like a bridge tap, or you have some sort of an issue on your MBN service, or maybe you need to have some new cabling and sockets installed, um, we provide a range of services to help you out. There'll be some links underneath this video, um, and you can click on those links and they'll take you through to our website where you can book my service. All right, thank you very much. Goodbye.